So if you're like me, you probably look into improving your full work all the time. So let's get it. Welcome back to another Kendo Tips video. My name is Jose, I'm a Yondang in Kendo, and today I wanna to talk about some of the most common mistakes that I see on full work and quick little tips to how to fix them. So today I'm gonna to show you five things. I am doing it myself, so I'm over exaggerating some of these. You may not look the same, or it may not look the same for you, obviously, because I'm, I'm acting this out, but hopefully with the name that I gave to this problem and the description I'm showing you and telling you, maybe you will understand how to transfer that into your own Kendo because everybody's going to be different. Before I keep going though, I want to ask you, if, please, if you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing and hitting the like button. That will help my channel grow and I'll be really, really grateful. The first problem I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna call it dipping, and it's when our body kind of goes down to low and comes back up towards the end of the footwork. This is a problem because what happening is that you're losing support from your left leg and then your right leg is going to pull you up at the end of that footwork. Now, the problem with this is that the right leg is supposed to pull you forward rather than up. I made some videos before about footwork and when it comes to Fumikomi, Fumikiri and the use of uh, both feet. I'm gonna put the basics playlist right here. You can go check those videos there. The main thing is that you wanna understand that the left leg should be supporting your weight as much as possible throughout the footwork and the right leg should be more of a transition step to pull you forward. If your leg has to pull you up, then you're stopping your momentum and not really getting the full potential that you can have when it comes to speed and strength and just overall presence in your footwork. Ideally, in order to start avoiding this problem is that first understand the use of the left leg, understand the Fumikiri, but also practice small steps where you don't have to dip and then start getting bigger, longer, longer, longer until the point that you feel comfortable taking a long step without having to dip. Of course, we're going to dip a little bit, but look to try to be as level as possible throughout your whole footwork. The next one that I'm gonna mention is going to be balance. And now, I, I really didn't know how to put a good name to this one, but balance, I mean like when we're moving, at the end of the footwork it tends to happen that when you land your footwork, people kind of are a little bit out of balance. And this could happen because you're coming in too fast, you haven't really understood how to land your footwork. The other thing is that a lot of times when people take a step, they land too narrow. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that every time you end your footwork, you're at the same position as you were when you first started in Kamai. It all starts with Kamai though, so you need to get that first. A lot of times happen a lot to people that do the dipping where they lose the balance because when you're coming up on their footwork, it, it, it kind of sometimes your body overshoots it and you're out of balance because your center of gravity is a little bit too high. Again, if you fix, fix the dipping, obviously you can start fixing this problem, but it also goes to the fact that you want to start with a low center of gravity where you feel solid and in balance and in control and end at the same point. You want to make sure that you're not raising your, your toes, your, your feet, or standing in the tip of your toes. At the end of the footwork, you want to land a solid footwork, same as you were in a solid Kamaka. The next one that I wanna mention, I call it leaning, and it's when we're using the upper body to move forward first. What this does is kinda of start creating a disconnection between the upper body and the lower body. The lower body should be the one pushing you forward. It kinda of also helps be a little bit unpredictable for your opponent, because if they see you coming from the upper body, they're gonna start catching your timing and they're gonna get you with another technique. That being said, with timing, when you're using your foot, your lower body, you can change that time. You can go faster, you can even go a little bit slower when you're moving your footwork. So it makes it a little bit less predictable for your opponent. What you want to do in order to do this is understanding that even though in Kamai, our body has to have a forward momentum, the left leg is the one that's going to start pushing you and you should activate your core in general. Push with your core rather than leaning forward. You should always have that forward momentum, but don't use it to start the motion. Use your leg, especially your left one. The next one, I'm going to call it rising. Or rising, rising. Okay, so you go up instead of going forward. This happens a lot with people when they're too tense and they push and their body goes up rather than forward. So my advice for that is do your footwork, practice footwork slow and short 
understanding that use of the left leg to push you forward and little by little you should build up to having a footwork that's always going to push you forward even if you were like if you got scared you got stressed or whatever you're always pushing forward instead of doing that little jump up the next one i think this one it's one that i see very commonly especially with people trying to do a long footwork and a long fumikomi is that they land with the heel It could happen that it lands with the heel or they are pushing with their heel when they're going backward. This is a big problem, especially with Fumikami, because if you land that Fumikami strong, hard with your heel, you're not only gonna hurt your heel, but it's also gonna create damage on your knees. You want to avoid that. The way to start getting rid of this is to make sure that you practice short step, driving with your knee forward and making sure that no matter how long your step is, try to land with a flat foot. It kind of almost looks like you're landing with the, with the ball of your foot rather than the heel. Practice that, take a slow, break it down, and make sure that um, you get that part solid. Now the last one I guess is gonna be a little bit of a bonus because I definitely think that I may need to do a video specifically on this one and it's dragging your left leg. I'm gonna give you two main causes and possible solutions for it, but I understand that it could be more than just these two things that may be happening. One of them might be that you haven't really understood the use of Fumikiri, especially towards the end of that footwork. One thing that helped me a lot to fix that problem is that I want to think that even though if I'm doing one step, right when I land that step, I have to do another one. For some reason that helps me a lot, just make sure that that foot is ready to push again. For me, it's kind of like a little bit of a push, a kick, and then I anchor my foot. But I call it anchor, but I anchor my foot to push forward again. Even though if I'm not gonna take a step, I, I try to be conscious of that. The other main reason why you may be dragging your left leg is because your heel might be towards the inside of your body, making your toes to go out. Instead of allowing the whole leg to just use all the muscles properly to go forward, you kind of start using the inner side of your thigh. So that takes away a lot of muscle power and it definitely forces the right leg to push you forward. What you want to do is to want to make sure that your feet are looking towards your opponent and that heel is not going towards the inside of your body. You want to make it stay on the outside. That way your leg is engaged to go towards your opponent at all times. Was that enough? Was, I don't know. Hopefully you really enjoyed this video. Hopefully this was useful. And hopefully we can use this to keep growing our kendo. If you have any questions or any suggestions, please leave them in the comments below. I'm here for you. Also, again, if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting that like button. I really appreciate your views and all the support lately. Please keep it coming my way and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.